Hey guys, it's me Lachlan and I'm here today with a brand new Battlefield video and today we have a rather interesting question on our hands. Now recently I was asked this question on YouTube and it's something that I thought I would bring into a video and discuss with you guys today. Now the question was, if hardware and software limitations weren't a problem, what would be my dream Battlefield game? Now we're not talking hardware limitations like, oh yeah, let's look at virtual reality and all this other interesting gaming tech which is coming out. I'm talking if I had the pure raw power of a graphics card like 40 years down the line from now and the processing power of like a quantum computer. So immense amounts of power at my disposal. What would I ask developers to make? What Battlefield game would I ask them to create and do? And some of these I thought, in time, within the next few years, could be feasible. So almost battlefield concepts for the future. So today I thought I'd bring you guys my ideas and I'd really love to hear yours as well. So let's get straight on into this. So my first battlefield idea from the future actually comes and originates from years ago. Now years ago I used to be a huge real-time strategy fan. I still kind of am as well at the moment but I'm looking for the right kind of game. Now real-time strategy for me was like gold dust. It was incredible stuff to play. It's really tense. It's really uh, tactical and it's just something that I adored. Now I'm not saying make Battlefield a real-time strategy game because practically already EA has already done that. Now years ago I used to play Command and Conquer Generals and this game was the best real-time strategy, in fact arguably one of the best games I have ever played. Back in its prime, Command and Conquer Generals for me and Command and Conquer Generals Zero Hour which was its DLC was just the craziest shit I had ever played. It was so much fun. Now, I feel as though in years times when the concept of having less limited hardware and software capabilities, there is the opportunity to merge Command and Conquer and Battlefield together. Make these two games one game. Now, if you think about this, it's not actually as complicated as it sounds. Because Battlefield and Command and Conquer operate in similar ways already. Now, Command and Conquer, for example, you build your base, you deploy your infantry, you deploy your tanks, you deploy your weaponry, and you have to go fight the enemy until you destroy their base. Now, in Battlefield, it's somewhat similar. You spawn in, you spawn your tanks, you get in your tanks, you get in your vehicles, you get your objectives, you capture bases, and you drain tickets, and that's how the game is won. Now, they have nearly identical playing styles, like in Command & Conquer, you could commandeer buildings or destroy large buildings such as the enemy base, which was the overall objective, or even if you were doing like a campaign style mission, you'd probably have to destroy or capture something. You could spawn in vehicles for players to use, you could give out orders to the squad or infantry that you had on the ground, maybe defend one specific area, attack a different area, have a certain stance, like be passive-aggressive, shoot on sight, all those kind of orders were available to you. You also had to the objective to supply intel. You could use uh, a propaganda station or stuff like that to give your players benefits and also hack into the enemy team to locate them and use UAVs. That was how Command and Conquer Generals worked. It was an incredibly complex game for what it was at the time. This game was made 10, 15, maybe even sort of between 10 and 15 years ago. You know, this was an incredibly advanced game for its era. And it feels as though in Battlefield, we already do most of the things that are done in Command and Conquer Generals. We commandeer buildings like they do in Generals, we sweep through them and hold them down. We defend objectives and attack objectives. We destroy large buildings with evolution. There is all kinds of stuff that we already do which would perfectly sync into Command and Conquer. Now my idea would be almost to have a guy who is the real-time strategy, he is the MVP, he is the commander, yeah? And then you have the rest of the team. The rest of the team's just waiting, they're on the deployment screen, and the commander is building his base. The commander builds his base, he deploys his first wave of infantry. The infantry go in, the infantry do their work, they defend, they attack, they do all that kind of stuff. He also deploys the vehicles, he deploys everything that is available. And in Command and Conquer you can do all kinds of crazy stuff, you can capture oil refineries, those could be potential objectives in the game to get you extra money and to excel your attack. You can also do things like defend objectives and lock down areas. You can also do crazy, crazy stuff like promoting entire squads and giving them upgrades and upgrading their weaponry. And it's just so tactically mindset 
it's it's amazing. And I would love to see these two games blended together. You have different factions. You have the uh, the GLA, I think it was. You have the the Chinese faction and the USA faction, all of with their own benefits. The Chinese had hacking capabilities. The GLA uses toxins and bioweapons and dirty bombs, and they also use tunnels as well to get from place to place. And the US had sheer raw power and advanced weaponry. And this would work in the similar sense. You know, you get your factions. Your factions each have their own benefits. Your factions both have their own classes. Maybe you want a sniper rifle, which you could get called a professional in Command & Conquer. Maybe you want engineers who are good at taking out other vehicles, which you could get in Command & Conquer. You could deploy an engineer, or you could deploy an assault player. It's so well synced together. It's literally 100% a game which could totally happen. And I'm not talking 20 years from now. I'm saying that this could be possible within the next five years. It's an amazing idea. I could build a freaking entire diary of stuff for you. But I'm going to have to move on to the next concept. So my next concept actually takes inspiration from the Planetside franchise. And for me, Planetside does an incredibly good job at the concept of war as a whole. Now, in Planetside, you don't fight over team death matches and domination and conquest. You fight for regions. It is an ongoing war. It is an ongoing process. There is never a time where the war stops. It's an ongoing situation. And for me, Planetside does a very good job as well of that feeling of ownership. Now, it's something you never get in Battlefield, the feeling that you belong to something. And that sounds incredibly desperate and somewhat worrying, but we'll come to that later. But for me, Planetside is about being part of a faction. It's about being this team, and this team which we're going to triumph with, who is going to screw over everybody in Battlefields. And more specifically in Planetside, your name means something. Now, if you roll up in Planetside with a certain username or a certain tag or something, that might actually stick around. You might actually be known as that squad who is freaking badass. That team who is so awesome that they capture every single region all the time and they do some really good assaults. And that would be incredible to see. I've always wanted to see hundreds of players on Battlefield flying into an island or something and just going to war. That would be incredible. Now obviously it's a huge ask because the Planetside engine is outstandingly different to the Frostbite engine. If you could take the detail of battles and gunplay and engagements of Frostbite and take the scale of Planetside and throw those two together and have this ongoing war between countries, that would be freaking awesome. Now, alongside this concept, I kind of wanted to introduce something which I've been waiting for in Battlefield for God knows how long. And it is the ability to make a character. To make a person. Because I feel as though in Battlefield, I'm just running around as some generic douchebag who's just like, Oh yeah, Murako, or oh yeah, China, let's kill people, or whatever. I want a guy that I can make. I want a guy that can look like me or look like a cool badass character with cool badass gear and throw him into a faction of my choice. That's something that I've wanted to do for so long now and I still haven't been able to do it. And you would have thought by now, maybe within the next year or two, we'd see a battlefield where, yeah, I can finally make a character who looks like and potentially even sounds like me and has my name and I can put him in the team that I want to put him in. That's something which I've been wanting to do for ages now. Character customization on Battlefield only goes so far until you actually have a sense of ownership. And it's something which isn't in the game now, and probably something which we're not going to see in the game for a good while to come. So guys, it's been me, Lachlan. I hope you enjoyed this Battlefield Concepts from the Future, as, as I've titled it, Battlefield Dreams. Let me know what you guys want to see. Maybe you want to see something completely out there, something which is crazy something which is even potentially futuristic or stone age i don't know let me know your concepts guys hit me back with your ideas in the description below it's been me lachlan i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i'll see you again soon with another battle video very soon